One day in May of the year 412 AD, a storm rose on the Indian Ocean. At the time, navigation was very dangerous, but even so, a small ship was out there on the rolling waves. Braving the terrible waves and rainstorm, the ship moved eastward, but only with great difficulty. Against the forces of nature, those aboard could only follow the tradition of lowering the mainsail and then pray for safe passage. Amid the prayers, an old monk by the name of Farshan remained calm and indifferent. And this caught the attention of the others. He didn't pray, nor did he panic. He remained peaceful both inwardly and outwardly. The reason Farshan was able to be so calm and peaceful was because he had devoted his life to Buddhism some 13 years prior. During the storm, he was only worried for the safety of the Buddhist sutras stored behind him. If the sutras were thrown into the sea, the monks of his country would have to suffer longer in their pursuit of Buddhism. However, he didn't know that something worse than the storm was working its way towards him. The ship was perilously out of control. The Brahmin merchants on board wondered if Vashyan, a devoted Buddhist, was the source of their disaster. They thought that they might be saved if they threw him into the sea to pacify the ocean deity. An atmosphere of evil and death engulfed the ship. But Vashyan simply waited quietly for his time to come. The year 337 marks the 18th anniversary of the founding of the later Zhao dynasty in northern China. During this new dynasty, a baby was born in Wuyang, Pingyang Prefecture. The child was named Fa Xian. Wuyang was located in today's Shanxi province, and Fa Xian was born in Gong village. According to the ancient book, Biographies of Eminent Chinese Monks, Fa Xian was surnamed Gong, and his parents were both farmers. The baby brought plenty of happiness to the poor family. Having lost their first three children, Fa Xian's parents had great expectations for him. However, happiness never lasts long. Since his family was poor, Fa Xian remained weak, and he suffered from repeated illnesses. When he was three, he developed a particularly horrible disease. His doctor could find no cure. The ailing Fa Xian caused his parents tremendous grief. How could they help him survive? The sound of a bell from a Buddhist temple gave hope to the desperate couple. This is Xiantang Temple. It's an ancient Buddhist temple in Shanxi Province's Xiangyuan County. According to local annals, in the early part of the temple's history, a famous monk served here. Later on, however, he left for good. We don't know if that monk was Fa Xian, the man who promoted Buddhism in China. But what is certain 
is that this temple helped Fa Xian to survive. In the old days in China, people often hoped that the gods would help them accomplish what they couldn't achieve on their own. Fa Xian's parents were no different, so they brought him to Xian Tang Temple in the hopes that under the protection of the Bodhisattva, their son would be cured of his ailments. Buddhism was founded on the teachings of Shakyamuni in ancient India during the 6th century BC. Shakyamuni became known as the Lord Buddha. When Buddhism was first introduced to China, at first it didn't spread very far. It was a foreign religion, and the fact was that Confucianism held great sway in China. However, the monopoly of Confucianism would be broken in the 4th century during a period of social turmoil. The 4th century was a very difficult time for China. Following the collapse of the Western Jin Dynasty, herdsmen from the north established their empires north of the Yangtze River. War broke out, plunging the people into intense misery and suffering. In those years of turmoil, people didn't have much hope for their current life. Buddhism seemed to promise rebirth into a happier life, and this was a salve for their sufferings. As a result, Buddhism began to spread further than it ever had in China. It was in this very religious environment that the young Fa Xian came to the temple. According to local records, he may have been the first person in China to convert to Buddhism for reasons of health. In the year 340 AD, the three-year-old Fa Xian was converted to Buddhism on Xian Tang Mountain. In the temple, he not only practiced Buddhism, but also improved his health. It really was to be his rebirth. In Xian Tang Temple, Fa Xian grew up and excelled in his Buddhist studies. His belief in Buddhism had become a great source of strength. However, he was adversely affected by the turmoil of the country. In 354 AD, when Fa Xian was 17, the later Zhao dynasty collapsed. As a result, war broke out in northern China, throwing the country into chaos. Fa Xian's hometown wasn't spared from the turmoil either. One day, while the monks of Xian Tang Temple were harvesting rice, a group of refugees from war-ravaged areas tried to steal their grain. While the other monks ran for their lives, the young Fa Xian stood and watched.
The words spoken by Fa Shan made the refugees feel ashamed. They gave the grain back to the young monk and went on their way. As a man sows, so does he reap. This is a simple Buddhist theory, and it's a principle that directly gives people hope for their future. It also restrains their actions. Buddhism could even stop people from committing crimes. Fa Xian realized that Buddhism was a very powerful religious force. In the year 357, when Fa Xian was 20, he undertook being an ascetic and officially became a monk. This meant that he was subject to the 250 rules of the Buddhist discipline. His life in the temple influenced his spiritual consciousness and the precepts of Buddhism influenced his heart. The Buddhist precepts were formulated by Shakyamuni for monks to regulate their behavior. The precepts cover almost every aspect of a monk's life. They guide and correct the believer's practice of Buddhism. When practicing Buddhism, Fa Shan always put its precepts above everything else. And he remained true to each of them. Fa Shan stayed in Xiantang Temple for a dozen years. This small cave is close to Xiantang Temple in Xiangyuan County. Legend has it that this is where Fa Xian practiced Buddhism during the summer months. During summer, Buddhists meditate on their studies for three months. It's in this tiny place that Fa Xian probably spent about 30 summers, or about a third of his life. During this era, dynasties rose and fell. Back then, it was the former Qin dynasty, established by the Di people, that ruled most areas of northern China. The Qin dynasty was so powerful that it almost unified all of northern China. In 379, the ruler of the former Qin dynasty forcefully captured the strategically important town of Xiangyang from the Eastern Jin Dynasty. As dynasty founder Fu Jian put it, I used 100,000 troops to capture Xiangyang for only one person. The person he was referring to was Xu Dao An, a senior Chinese monk. In 381 AD, the monk Dao An began teaching at Wu Chung Temple in Chang'an, the capital of the former Qin. The number of his disciples quickly increased to several thousand. With the full support of the emperor, Dao An recruited a large number of translators from among the monks in India and the western regions, as well as local monks. Under the personal supervision of Dao An, they translated, edited, and wrote forwards for selected Buddhist sutras. Altogether, they translated 183 volumes of Buddhist sutras in 14 books, totaling about 1 million Chinese characters. This, of course, greatly increased Chinese versions of the Buddhist classics and gradually made Chang'an the center of Buddhism in northern China. These classics, translated under the supervision of Dao An, were undoubtedly quite appealing to Fa Xian, a devoted Buddhist. 
Fa Xian longed to visit Chang'an due to its deeply Buddhist environment. In his late 40s, he came to believe that Chang'an was where he needed to practice Buddhism. This was the first journey Fa Xian made away from his home province. He headed westward toward Chang'an. He was most likely conflicted when leaving his home. However, it was his devout Buddhist beliefs that were the ultimate decider. Thus, this future traveler began his life's journey. The magnificent city of Chang'an and the Grand Wu Chung Temple amazed Fa Xian when he first arrived. But he was more excited that in Chang'an he would be able to attend gatherings of influential Buddhist monks. At the time, Chang'an was a place where Buddhism was flourishing. In the end, Fa Xian stayed in Chang'an for more than 10 years, during which time he visited with most of the famous monks that arrived after him. He assiduously studied all sorts of Buddhist classics. Although born into poverty, he became an accomplished monk. The book Compilation of Notes on the Translation of the Tripitaka praises Fa Xian with the following words. He's a quick study and lives strictly in line with Buddhist precepts. However, the increase in the number of Buddhists didn't make Fa Xian happy. On the contrary, it worried him. With the support of the rulers of the dynasty, Buddhists were soon found throughout the country, and many large organizations of monks were established. However, there was a lack of comprehensive rules for regulating the monks. During the days of Fa Xian, Buddhist precepts from India were incomplete in China. In addition, inaccurate translations led to serious misunderstandings, and some organizations of monks were divided because of this. There was a bottleneck in the development of Chinese Buddhism. There were now hundreds of thousands of Buddhist followers, and they were at a loss as to what to do without proper and complete precepts to follow. Having practiced Buddhism for many years, Fa Xian had become a devout Buddhist who was resolute and stuck to the Buddhist precepts. He saw the disorder that prevailed in Buddhist circles in China, but he couldn't do anything about it. According to historical records, Fa Xian always complained that China lacked the complete Buddhist sutras, and he thus vowed to try and locate them. He believed that this was a mission a devout Buddhist should undertake. However, he realized it was impossible to find a complete set in China. After Zhang Qian visited the western regions, the Silk Road came into being. As a result, exchange between the hinterland of China and the countries of the western regions was on the rise. This made it easier for monks from the western regions and India to spread Buddhism into other parts of China. It also helped Fa Xian devise a process of regulating monks in China. In 
In order to regulate groups of monks with great devoutness and determination, Fa Shan decided to travel to India. He knew that this was the only place that he could learn all the Buddhist precepts. These days, it's hard to imagine how such an old man could decide to go on such a long journey. But one's personal beliefs can be a powerful motivating force. He felt it was the responsibility of all Chinese monks to make this trip. In 399 AD, Fa Shen left Chang'an on his long journey westward. Ten monks joined him on the trip. With all the confusion and fighting going on in the country and the difficulty of the terrain, how could this 62-year-old monk, together with those who accompanied him, manage to make it all the way to India. No one knew the answer. But Fa Xian believed firmly that he should keep on moving westward for as long as he could. Fa Xian was in India trying to gather a complete set of the Buddhist sutras. However, he encountered great difficulty in locating them. Those who had joined him on the journey left him one after the other. Fa Xian was saddened and he was somewhat desperate. Would he end his westward journey or continue on? Please join us for part two of Fa Xian's spiritual journey.